Nothing is perfect. Not this world, not the people in it, not the things they create, nothing. Not even me, a man who on the face of it does not possess a single physical or emotional flaw. No, 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 you're right, I am pretty close, but my knees are made of dust and I can just, I can never spell the word vehicle first time, so I am at best a 99 out of 100. Same goes for TV shows as well, you see, as even the most polished series can be littered with otherwise avoidable errors that somehow make it to air. Most of the time, these are excusable or understandable, but since when has that stopped us pointing them out? Thing is, though, today we're not here to pick faults, but rather to praise the creators who expertly managed to style them out. Be that clever rewrites, a wink to the audience, or even just making their gaffes a core part of the show. My name is the almost perfect Adam Cleary, and these are 10 genius ways TV shows fix their own mistakes. Number 10. A visible crew member became Bob. Twin Peaks. There are countless examples of TV shows cleverly papering over major mistakes, and then there's David Lynch deciding he liked a blunder so much he basically made it the entire premise of Twin Peaks. While shooting a scene featuring Sarah Palmer, the face of a set dresser by the name of Frank Silver was accidentally visible in the mirror behind her. Look, there you go, there he is. Now, Silver, with all due respect to him, looks a bit like some sort of boathouse sex case here, and Lynch loved the eerie visual so much that he not only decided to keep it in, but gave Silver a role in the show. I mean, not a big one or anything, just the series' primary antagonist, a terrifying, murdering interdimensional entity known as Bob. Crazy, really, as if the guy had just been stood anywhere else during that shot, the entire show would have been completely different. Number 9. Kelsey Grammer's flub turned into an ad-lib joke. Frasier. Frasier is a better sitcom than Friends. If that statement of cold, unforgiving, merciless fact is bothering you, then here is my Twitter handle. Please feel free to present a counterpoint to me that I will almost definitely ignore. Anyway, while shooting a scene for the season 11 episode A Man, A Plan and A Gal Julia, Grammer flubbed one of his lines, referring to himself as the old, fault-finding, floor-fleeing Frasier. But David Hyde Pierce, who plays Niles, saved the take without missing a beat by smugly replying, You said Flasier, to the explosive laughter of the live studio audience. The two men then launch into a squabbling match as the scene gradually comes to a close. I mean, trying to say the old, fault-finding, floor-fleeing Frasier is a tongue twister, although obviously I just managed it in the first take, but round of applause to both men for styling it out ingeniously. Number 8. The hilarious explanation for the infamous uncut pizza. Breaking Bad. One of Breaking Bad's most memorable moments isn't a shocking character death or a jaw-dropping plot twist, but a scene early in Season 3 where Skylar won't let Walt into their home. He, and I'm sure as any of us would do in that situation, angrily hurls his pizza onto the roof. The pizza, though, is uncut, and naturally it took the internet the sum total of, uh, five seconds to notice this, and it became a bit of a big deal. Such a big deal, in fact, that the show's creators had to drop to their very knees, beg forgiveness, and point out how hard it would actually be to successfully throw an entire pizza onto a roof when it's in 12 slices. However, to their eternal credit, they actually paid this moment off in Season 4 when Jesse, Badger, and Skinny Pete order one in. Badger telling the lads that the pizza company deliberately doesn't slice them to pass the savings on to the customer, even going so far as to calculate how many man hours they would save in doing so. The producers saved face and, in the process, created the most accurate depiction of being baked ever seen on TV. Number 7. Season 4's inconsistencies were caused by a gas leak. Community. Beloved community showrunner Dan Harmon was fired by NBC at the end of the show's third season, resulting in David Garararaskio and Moses Port being drafted in to write the fourth season. After that then arrived to a... and how can I put this delicately... incredibly mixed reviews. Yeah, that'll do. Harmon said that the series was very much like an impression and an unflattering one. NBC replaced us with two guys who didn't know what they were getting into, and I think they tried their best. NBC, seeing both sense and presumably their ratings, rehired Harmon very quickly. But rather than simply trying to pick up the tattered pieces of season four, he decided to reset the table by hilariously having the characters comment on a gas leak that occurred on the campus and caused all the off-base events on the prior season. Its two subsequent final seasons, I'm pleased to report, were very good. Number 6. Pike's missing rank bars were added with CGI. Star Trek Discovery. Detail is important in all TV shows, but for Star Trek, well, 
Yes, I mean, have you met Star Trek fans? I am one of them, and when the next generation played fast and loose with the USS Yamato's registry number, I didn't sleep for two goddamn days. Don't know why I'm telling you that, you're not my therapist, but anyway, Star Trek Discovery was recently forced to fix an issue in post-production. You see, while shooting the early scenes for Season 2, they forgot to include the cuffed rank bars on Captain Pike's iconic yellow uniform. Some whiz in the marketing department picked up on it before the series actually dropped, and the only viable option was to somehow add them in with CGI. It's a clanger and really dumb that a show already spending so much on visual effects had to do this as well, but looking at it now, you'd honestly never notice. Number 5. Charlie's Poor Spelling Becomes a Running Gag Numbers Hit crime drama series Numbers revolves around FBI agent Don, who is this guy, and his math genius brother Charlie, who is this guy, and they run around solving crimes together. But just because you're a whiz with numbers, it doesn't mean you're totally on the ball with words. As evidenced by Charlie blatantly misspelling the word anomaly as anamoly when writing it on a map in the show's pilot episode. Many fans picked up on this mistake and had fun mocking both Charlie and the crew, prompting the show's writers to make Charlie's poor spelling a running gag over the course of the show. Memorably, the season 1 finale featured an exchange between Don and Charlie about whether or not Charlie knows how to spell anomaly, and later in the show's life, references were made to him being a, and I quote, horrible speller. Number 4. Tony burned his hand and it stayed in The Sopranos Ralph was one of The Sopranos' greatest characters, and so it was fitting that he received a suitably unforgettable, if brutally violent death. You remember he was strangled and beaten at the hands of Tony Soprano and then later dismembered to elevate him to the TV status of Super Super Dead. But in the immediate aftermath of Ralph's murder, an exhausted Tony gets to his feet and blearily stumbles around the kitchen where the fight took place, accidentally placing his hand on a lit stove and quickly screaming out in pain. This naturally carried a rather loud expletive. Tony burning his hand, though, actually wasn't scripted for the scene, but due to Gandolfini's perfect reaction and how brilliantly it accentuated the roughness of Ralph's murder, the painful botch was kept in. Number 3. Netflix went and fixed a scene. Orange is the New Black In the Season 5 episode of Orange is the New Black, Maritza is filming a beauty tutorial vlog where she explains that in prison, she typically uses household spices to contour her face rather than the usual fancy department store products. Specifically, cinnamon, cumin, and saison goya. But as she says that last one, it's extremely obvious that she's actually pointing at saison abodo. Which, as we all know, is a totally different spice, Jesus! Naturally, viewers barely noticed it, and those who did just accepted it as a small mistake at the time, and nothing more was said. Number 2, a clumsy exodus. <laughs> no, of course, no. No, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Twitter had a meltdown, Reddit turned it into a meme, and Netflix had to entirely reshoot the sequence with the correct spice in place. What an age. What an age this is. What a time to be alive when they will remake parts of TV shows because of a split-second shot of someone pointing at the wrong spice jar. We're doomed. We are doomed. We are doomed. We're doomed as a species. Doomed. It's all, it's all over. Absolutely doomed. Repent. Number two, a clumsy extra was kept in for dramatic reasons. Mash. The season three of MASH concluded with the death of Lieutenant Corporal Henry Blake as announced by a traumatized Radar O'Reilly to the assembled OR surgeons. As Radar leaves the room, the camera pans back across the surgeons in an unbroken take as they're either frozen in shock or fighting back tears or simply trying to focus on the patients they're meant to be operating on. But at the end of the shot, the noise of someone dropping a surgical item, rumored to be a scalpel or a tray, can be heard very clearly. A genuine accident apparently not written into the script, but was kept in the episode due to its authenticity. I mean, yeah, I guess. I've never particularly been a surgeon or served in Vietnam, but if somebody I knew died, I might drop a thing, I guess. Number 1. The Tale of Two Beckys, Roseanne If you grew up in the 90s, there's a good chance you saw your fair share of Roseanne episodes, and if not, well, then that's fine too. It was on directly after both The Simpsons and The Fresh Prince here in the UK, so I've seen a lot of it, but I still have literally no idea what it was about. Anyway, the show faced a bit of an issue when series staple Lacey Goranson, who played Becky, decided she wanted to leave to complete a college degree at the end of the show's fifth season. And yeah, fair enough. The show's producers wrote Becky out, but then decided that the character should return. So they recast Becky with future Scrub star Sarah Schalk, and again, also fair enough. But by season 8, Goranson was able to return, resulting in Schalk being let go. 
However, because Goranson's college schedule still occasionally conflicted with filming, Schalk occasionally returned to fill in for her. Then, in last year's belated 10th season, Goranson returned to play Becky, and Schalk was brought in to play an entirely new character. Again, to numerous, numerous, numerous jokes. They were going to do the same again for the initially greenlit 11th season, but then, yeah, if you don't, if you don't know why that got cancelled, maybe look it up, because I am not saying that out loud. So, there you have it. Those are 10 genius ways TV shows fix their own mistakes, read to you by nature's greatest mistake himself. Let us know what you made of it all in the comments below, and of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. In the meantime, though, thank you so much for watching. I have been the perfect Adam Cleary. I don't care what I said at the start, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.